Welcome to the Work Camper Show, brought to you by WorkCamper.com. This podcast helps you discover how to finance your RV travel dreams. Each one of our episodes will introduce you to people who are already living the RV lifestyle or to work camping opportunities all around the U.S. You'll also learn how to hit the road the right way and make the most of every opportunity. Now let's turn over today's show to your host, Greg Gerber. Today I'm interviewing a couple from Florida who, although not full-time RVers, have been doing enough frequent shorter trips that they amassed quite a following on their YouTube channels. Today's episode is sponsored by Work Camper News. If you have more questions and answers when it comes to work camping and the RV lifestyle, then don't worry, Work Camper News has your back. Attend a free monthly work camping Q&A webinar to get your questions answered. Each month, the knowledgeable team behind WorkCamper.com hosts a free live webinar where they answer questions submitted by folks just like you who are learning about the RV lifestyle, just getting started, or who've been work camping for a while. They cover topics like what kind of work camping jobs are available, what do those jobs pay, tips for writing a work camper resume, questions to ask an employer, what type of RV is best, how to get your email as an RVer, and much more. In the description of each video, you'll find a list of questions that were answered so you can quickly jump to the sections you want to hear. Register for the next live webinar at workcamper.com forward slash answers. Or listen to detailed answers now by watching the recordings of past Q&A webinars on the Work Camper News YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash workcamper. Then click on the Q&A on Work Camping playlist. Joe and Rachel Stover are an amazing couple who together lost 290 pounds by following a keto-based diet. The transformation attracted so much attention from their friends and family that they started a YouTube channel to teach others what they did. There was a lot of demand for that kind of information because the couple has 66,400 subscribers on that channel alone who can watch 1,800 different videos pertaining to a healthy lifestyle. Producing all those videos became a full-time job. So, in 2020, the couple bought an RV to force themselves to go outdoors and leave the demands of producing content. Yet they loved the RV experience so much, they developed another YouTube channel to teach people about the RV lifestyle. That channel features more than 100 videos being enjoyed by 28,500 subscribers. This year, Joe and Rachel are contestants on Season 2 of RV Unplugged, a competition in which 10 couples compete as teams to win a $25,000 grand prize by demonstrating their boondocking skills while engaging in the types of fun people often have when using their RVs. To tell us more about their experiences, from losing a lot of weight to using their RVs as a way to relax, please welcome Joe and Rachel Stouffer to the show. Thanks for joining me, Joe and Rachel. I really appreciate the time. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in the RV lifestyle. We, we were both weekend warrior RVers and I actually grew up camping, but I grew up tent camping. I was an Eagle Scout and every weekend during the summer. And then for a couple of weeks during the summer, we used to go to upstate New York to Monticello and do a lot of camping. And I used to see like pop-ups and RVs in the local campgrounds. I always wanted one. And my dad was like, that's not camping. And it was just something that was like a dream of ours. And Back in 2017, I began eating a ketogenic way of eating. I actually have uh, several pins in my ankle. I had a debilitating car accident when I was 20 years old, and I was morbidly obese, well over 300 pounds. Rachel was well over 300 pounds, and I began eating a keto lifestyle to lose weight, but then quickly discovered that there were a lot of other health benefits to it. It's an anti-inflammatory diet, and I noticed I wasn't taking my painkillers for my ankle injury anymore. And we ended up making it our full-time lifestyle. And after about a year, I lost about 120 pounds. Rachel lost about 170 pounds when she joined me on it a few months later. And we decided to start a YouTube channel to basically help people build community, educate them on keto, helping people to like just take their health back. And what happened for us is we quickly learned that we had a lot of energy. When you lose the amount of weight that we lost, all of a sudden, like you have energy, you don't know what to do with it. And so I went to Rachel and I was like, let's start camping. And we tried tent camping a couple of times, but that doesn't work super well in Florida where it's raining all summer long and it's a hundred degrees and mosquitoes and everything else. In 2020, we actually bought a pop-up camper from a friend of ours 
we use that precisely three or four times and discovered pop-up campers with canvas doesn't really work that well in Florida either because it doesn't ever dry. So my, for my 50th birthday, Rachel got us an RV and we began RVing. Yeah, I decided that he definitely wasn't somebody that wanted a big party. I wasn't interested in throwing one. And so I thought that this would be a great entry level for us because we did have so much more energy. And I think that Florida is a great state for camping. Year round, we knew that whenever we had some free time, we could take it on the road. And we were right. We absolutely fell in love with camping. And the fact that every new place that we visited provided a new activity, whether it was paddleboarding or canoeing, kayaking, we could swim. We we got way into uh, scuba diving. Just there's so much things that you can do when you're camping. And for me, one thing was when we first started talking about purchasing an RV, I did resist a little bit because I was like, that's not camping. Like camping to me was a tent because that's how I grew up. And I started looking at this is the only way I was going to get Rachel into the woods. And we started exploring all of the amazing state parks that we have in Florida. But I very quickly learned that RVing isn't really about camping, that RVing is more about exploring the different places that we have to offer in this country. And you just get to bring your hotel room with you. So instead of finding a very fancy hotel near state parks, you could stay in the park and then you can just bring your amazing hotel room with you. And then, of course, all of the people that we've gotten to meet. And it's been just an amazing journey over the last few years. What type of RV did you finally decide to buy? So I think like most people, we started off again, we went from a pop up camper and we went to a local you know, RV store and we were looking at the little 17 foot Jayco's and oh, that's perfect. And we kept going, what about this? And what about this? And oh, wait, we could put a slide in it. And so we ended up buying a 2019 Grand Design Imagine 2600 RB. So it's with the tongue and everything. It's a 30 foot travel trailer and it's been absolutely perfect for us. It's a nice couples camper. It really is. At first, I was completely afraid of slides. Like I did not know what to expect. Certainly it was a different experience buying a trailer. I think that because it has wheels on it, I expected it to be like purchasing a vehicle. But it's not a car. (laughs) It's a very different um, thing. And I was very thankful that Joe's just a naturally handy guy. He likes tinkering with stuff. And the RV was a natural extension of his workshop. It was a place where he could continue to make it more and more comfortable for us. And I think, though, that it was key that he was already somebody that was naturally handy and somebody that we had a landscaping business. So he was used to towing and having a towable and being able to park that and and not be afraid of it to begin with. We've used camping as a way for us to get out and not stay in the house. One thing for me, if I'm in the house, I tend to work. I'm a workaholic. I'm always looking, what else can I do? I don't sleep very well at home because I'll be at like one o'clock in the morning. I'm like, oh, I should go edit this video. Oh, I can go do that. And what we quickly discovered was, is if we were out in the RV, I slept better. And so we started doing more and more trips where we were trying to get out for three or four days, at least every couple of weeks. We're blessed to uh, basically have a job where all we need is internet. We, We are YouTubers. So long as we could find some place that we could either get internet for live streaming or at minimum be able to film things. Uh, We could still work even though we were on the road, but still enjoy things. And it quickly dawned on us that a lot of people begin to take back their health, whether through keto or any other form of diet or exercise. But a lot of times what happens is we get our health back, we lose weight, but then we stay in our old routine and we stay on the couch. So it's become our motto to live life beyond the couch. I like that because so many people have these big, grandiose plans to do wonderful things when they retire. They're going to be turned 60, 65, get an RV and travel around the country, but they've neglected their health. So when they get to that age, they don't have the energy they need to be able to do anything but pull in to a campground and sit there under the awning or whatever it is inside and watch television. So to be able to embrace a healthier lifestyle, I think is a really good idea. And I I applaud you for promoting that to the RV community. 
We do hope that we can be a blessing to both communities, like helping to provide suggestions of how to move to people like in the keto space as they're getting healthy. And then also for us to be a presence within the RV community to be like, hey, while you're out, I I feel like the way that we eat, which is mostly meat and maybe a little bit of vegetables for entertainment purposes, I, I feel like that naturally lends itself to RVing and camping, like barbecuing over an open open flame. It's very easy to eat the way that we eat and then also be camping. So it's nice that hopefully there is crossover that we can help both communities. So one of your YouTube channels is devoted to that keto lifestyle. Talk about that for you for a few minutes, if you would. Sure. So back in, I guess it was 2018, we had both lost weight. A lot of people were asking us like, hey, how did you lose the weight? And we were children's directors at our church. And so people were always asking us. And one day we came home from church and we started talking about the fact that this is a second marriage for both of us. And we have never experienced being married to each other without children. And we started looking at the fact that our youngest at the time was, I think, 16 or 17 years old. And we were like, what are we going to do as they be getting ready to get married and move out? Like we we don't know what to do with each other without children. And so we decided to start a YouTube channel to basically help people with what we've done, taking back our health. And then we started focusing on community because it's very difficult to live life without community. As I really want to say, we should not live life without community. And If you're like us and you've been morbidly obese most of your life, you're not very good at making friends. You don't have a lot of support. And so we decided we wanted to have a place to for people to be able to come. And we said, listen, if you're willing to look up, our face will be there. We will be there to give you a hug, to talk to you, to encourage you. And so that spawned our keto channel. And then a few years ago, we ended up making it our full time job. Yeah, and we really enjoy it. And we have an opportunity to travel all over the country, speaking at keto conferences, also being MCs for different things. And we've just enjoyed so much the opportunity to see people face to face. There's something magical about actually seeing people face to face. And RVing provides that opportunity for us, not to just get on a plane and arrive someplace, we get to meet people all along the way. And I think that's just such a precious thing. And you're traveling with your home of sorts, and you're inviting people into your campsite, into that space that is, you know, precious to you. And and it tells a lot about you. And I think that it's just so awesome for us to have an opportunity to, to be host, to have that little bit of extra closeness and meet people all along the way. And we're really treasuring that opportunity to travel via RV. Do you only produce YouTube videos or do you serve as a health coach as well? We do do. We do health coaching. We make YouTube videos. Like Rachel said, we speak at different conferences. So it's a wide variety of things, but really focusing on that. And then also for our camping channel, we will do things like campground reviews, We will put up videos on a lot of upgrading for our RV because one of the things that we had was we discovered we loved our RV, but it was a 2019. And as we go to different RV shows, like the Florida RV Super Show, we would see, oh, they've improved things or, oh, I wish I had that in my RV. And we were blessed that we had an RV that really didn't have any problems. We never experienced the, the six months of an RV in an RV repair shop or anything like that. But we were like... I don't know if I really want to upgrade my RV because I like most of it, but there's things that I'd like to like change. So we started a series on our YouTube channel called Upgrading Eleanor, where we would make different changes and show people how to do that, like how to change out your absorption fridge to a 12 volt fridge or how to put different types of steps or power stabilization jacks, things like that. We enjoy any opportunity to be like a facilitator of community or also teach things that are simple. And we've really been blessed to learn things from YouTube and we like to give back that way. So a lot of times we'll, we do recipes on our keto channel that are, we call it so easy, even Rachel can make it because I'm a terrible cook. So if it's easy enough for me to follow, then I know it's everyone's going to be successful with it. And the same thing for whenever we're installing something or utilizing something, we like to have a how-to video 
about that so that we could just make it easier for people coming behind us. You had mentioned that you're weekend warriors. Do you do any long travel? Would you come out west? We actually have some plans to do that. So it's funny, we we call ourselves weekend warriors, but we generally have never camped on the weekends. (laughs) Because of our schedule, we can pretty much camp whenever we want. And one of the things that we always learned here in Florida, especially because we started off mostly in state parks, was it's much easier to get campgrounds during the week. And so we've never experienced the thing where people say, oh, I can't ever get a site. We've always been able to get a site at any of the state parks whenever we wanted to go. And we would go out for three or four nights and then go home for a couple of weeks to see the kids and then go back out. The longest trip we ever did was about 10 days where we drove our RV up to visit my mom. And then after that was in New York, that was New York. And then after that was RV Unplugged was the first time we were ever out for more than a week and unplugged. Right. We'd never really experienced boondocking, but now we do actually have plans. In the first week of April, we'll be driving up to Elkhart, Indiana for a week there and then traveling across to New York and then back down the East Coast. So we'll be gone for about a month. And then we're trying to plan a trip to go out West because that's one of the reasons we actually were excited about RV Unplugged is we do a lot of travel and we've experienced camping with friends, mostly tent camping, in like out west in Utah and Las Vegas at Lake Mead and Lake Powell. And we'd love to go out there. But in order to do that, we needed to get our RV to the point where we could boondock in the BLM land because we don't really have that over here on the East Coast. Right. So Joe put a lot of energy into building a solar system for us so that we could do more, you know, boondocking and be prepared for that. That's great. You'd mentioned RV Unplugged. Why don't you tell people what that is about and what did you do in this competition? You want to start or you want me to start? (laughs) Well, RV Unplugged Season 2, because we're part of the Season 2 cast, has been such an amazing opportunity. We actually just wrapped up filming for the show. And it is basically Survivor meets RVing is how I would describe it. So you've got 10 couples that are 10 teams that are competing to be the final one in this competition where you have lots of different challenges. You have a vote off element to it, just like Survivor. And the whole thing is done off grid. So you're bringing what you could utilize boondocking for two weeks. So you need your food, you need your water, you need an empty black tank for sure. And you're just going to to live off grid and also do competitions during the day. And don't try to bring in any water on your own, right? And sneak it in there. They'll they'll bring in dogs and sniff it out. (laughs) For season two, they actually allowed us to bring water, which was awesome. And one of the things that the producer said is they wanted to focus more on the RVing aspect, on on the challenge aspect, trying new things. (laughs) So we basically had to show up with however you would go boondocking. Right. So if you were going to go boondocking, you would bring water with you. So you were allowed to bring water with you. However, we were not allowed to refill our water. So whatever you could bring with you, whether it be your water, like Rachel said, an empty black tank, that's super important. A generator that you could run during what would be normal boondocking hour generator, solar battery, and everything like that. And like I said, for us, this was our first experience. We had all these plans when... They invited us to be part of the cast to go practice, and we never had the opportunity. So the first practice we ever had, even being unplugged, was going to the 2024 Florida RV Super Show, where even though we were staying at the rally, we decided to not plug in to see, can our batteries even take us four days? And it was such an exciting experience, but I think that we, and I hope other people try it, Instead of being afraid of boondocking, go to a campsite and we will stay in state parks. It would be inexpensive to do it. And you have your electricity and you have your water there and you have your sewer and just don't plug in and just go for a couple of days and see what it's like and have that safety net in place where you're trying it out. Because I think anything new, any new adventure, there's cer- certain element of fear to it. And you just don't try new things because you're afraid. What if I go all the way to Utah and I'm out in the middle of nowhere and we're going to die in the desert? But you could try at a local campsite just not plugging in and see how you do. See how you do if you don't have air conditioning or you can't refill the water. And we found that the 
fear of boondocking was so much more than actual boondocking. Actually, Rachel was terrified. I really enjoyed it though. We, we the first we tried boondocking once before. It was like I feel like it was like October of 2020. We tried it some, somewhere around there. We went for two days to Dupois Campground in Florida, which is just a free campground. And uh, you had to boondock. But again, we did it. It was hot. It was like in the 90s. And you can't have your generator at night. And we had one battery. And we were like, yeah, never, ever again. But now that we've been able to upgrade our RV, adding in some solar, adding in some lithium battery. What a difference. And learning how to make your water go. We were able to go for a couple of weeks. And we had plenty of water. And we were able to shower every day. It's just learning how to reuse things and conserve things. And it was an amazing time. I don't think that what it, what is water? What does a gallon of water look like in your life? If you ask me today, hey, take two pounds of clothes out of your suitcase. I wouldn't know what that looks like. Is that a shoe? Is that like underwear and pajamas? And it's the same thing with water. In my mind, I thought, okay, you have this much water, but I don't know exactly how many gallons of water does it take me to brush my teeth, wash my hair, that sort of thing. So that's like what you're exploring and also what you're afraid of. I was certain we're going to fill our black tank in two days. And he's, if you fill up a 40 gallon black tank, like in two days, we're taking you to the hospital. Okay. Cause there's something bad wrong. That's funny. Boondocking opens up so many options for RVers. When you're looking at the go RVing commercials, they're always out in these vast open spaces. And then the reality is that you're stuck at campgrounds where you're fingertip to fingertip to your neighbor. So the ability or the, you're encouraging people to try boondocking, I think is a very valuable service. Uh, yeah. One of the things when I look at campgrounds, I, I used to call, we, we've started going to some of them because again, we've discovered that RVing is about exploring more than where you're actually parking your RV. For a long time, we only went to RV to like state parks. And now we've started staying at actual RV parks, like Thousand Trails parks, Encore parks, things like that. But I used to call it like parking lot camping. Because it literally is just one after the other. Now we started doing it because it's in, many times inexpensive. And then there, we just go to a place where we can explore outside. But you're not going to find that at the Grand Canyon right. or, you know, at the BLM lands out in Utah or near Lake Powell. And being able to boondock and get to places where there are no RV parks, where there isn't easy access is exciting for us. Plus, you get some peace and quiet when you can get out to an area and you don't see any city lights and maybe there's no cell service. Like I, I'm a scuba diving instructor and people ask, why do you love scuba diving? I'm like, cause there's no phone underwater. Nobody can call me. Nobody can text me. And you get that when you go to some of these BLM lands. That's funny. What kind of solar system did you guys install that would enable you to do more boondocking? So I designed my own system and it's pretty much a, what a, a homesteader would use on their house. I've used a, an all-in-one system, very easy to install. We actually have a couple of videos on how to do it. it, it it's very inexpensive compared to what some RVers uh, put in because for us, it was like, we don't have fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 to put in an extensive battery system. And we were able to install our system for like less than $6,000. And we put uh, 1,600 watts of solar on our roof, an all-in-one true 3,000 watt inverter and we have 15,360 watt hours of batteries. It's 348 volt batteries. Even living in Florida, we've been able to run our air conditioner for as long as three days. Wow. Um, just putting it on for a few hours, cooling things down. And in the times that we've gone out, like even when we went to the Florida RV Super Show and we were unplugged for five days and it rained every day, when we came home, we still had 80% battery power left. But it was an, it's a great system. It was super, super easy to install, and, and it's allowing us to explore more places now. And you have more information about that on your on our camping channel. Campers. We have some install. Okay. We install videos. Yeah. Okay. Very but good. Again, I it's we say this is how I do it. I'm not a licensed electrician, although our adult son is. But it's very easy to just do some research on it because it's in all in one systems. It's literally like putting in your batteries and then hook this up and and you're done. I was able to do it in less than a day. Where was RV Unplugged filmed this year? Can uh, Camp Margaritaville. In, it was outside of Camp Margaritaville in Auburndale, Florida. And that's and, actually where the finale rally will take place in August. 
In August, I was going to ask, when will the episodes start airing? Do you know offhand? May 29th, they'll start airing, and I know they're airing on RVTV, as well as the RV Unplugged YouTube channel, which I suggest is one of the best places to watch it, because when each episode goes live, they're going to premiere it, and the contestants are going to be live in the chat. So we'll be talking about what was going through our mind as we each episode happens. Do you have any advice for people who are contemplating getting into the RV lifestyle? If you had to start all over again, is there something you'd do differently? I think that it can be very valuable to rent a camper and tr and try different layouts. I think a lot of times you feel pressure to just get into a certain camper and you really need to find out what camper works best for you because it's all about you enjoying the experience. If you enjoy the experience, you're going to use it more. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I find that people have in their mind what it's supposed to look like. With Maybe they've seen a, a movie and they think, oh, I always see someone RVing in a drivable. So that's what I need to have. Or sometimes people are like, hey, I want a great big rig. That's going to make it where I'm going to utilize it. Like for us, one of the most important factors was this trailer needed to fit on the side of our house because we didn't want to have to pay to have a monthly storage type of payment. We knew that if it was on the side of the house and you're making payments on this thing, it's like a glaring. Every time you pull into the driveway, you're thinking to yourself, I, we need to go on a trip. We need to use this thing that we are paying for. But it did need to fit within the restrictions of the side of our house. So that helped to determine what we were going to purchase, certainly like the towing capacity, we weren't ready at the time that we first got Eleanor to upgrade the vehicle that we had. So I think there's a lot of factors that people need to bring into it. Certainly, I don't think your first RV is ever going to be your last RV. So be okay with that. And also understanding that every RV is going to probably need some tweaking to, to make it your own. I would agree with Rachel. Like number one, if, if you're contemplating RVing and you've never done it before, go rent an RV and maybe try different kinds. If you don't know if you want a towable, rent a towable. And then if you think maybe I'd like a class B or a class C, go rent one and try the different types. For us, I love towing trailers. Towing a trailer does not bother me at all. I've been doing it since I learned how to drive when I was 15. So it never scared me. I enjoy having a bumper pull instead of a fifth wheel because I like having the bed to my truck. So for me, I knew where I wanted to be. And every once in a while, Rachel will be like, hey, maybe we should look at a class C. And I'm like, am I allowed to buy a Jeep? And she's like, no. Then I'm like, then I don't want a class C because I don't want to have to tow the car behind me. I like having a truck where we can disconnect and then go do whatever we want. One thing that I would talk about is if you're looking to get into RVs, number one, I would definitely recommend going to an RV show. Like right now when we're filming this, we're in the RV so show season. We just finished up the Florida RV Super Show. There's going to be regional shows all over the place. You've got the Hershey Show in September, which is the largest RV show. You can go there and see all of the different RVs because you're going to see different things like RL, RK, BH. Learn what the different models are and figure out what kind you want. For us, we enjoy a couple's camper. We enjoy a camper that's really designed for two people. Maybe it's got a pull-out bed or something like that if you want to bring grandchildren or something, but it doesn't have bunkhouses. That's what we enjoy. The other thing that I think you need to do is shop your RV based on your tow vehicle that you have. The last thing you want to do is go and buy an RV and then go, oh, I don't have a car that can actually tow this. Like one of our favorite movies is The Long Trailer with Lucille Ball. And if you've ever watched that movie, it is hysterical and it is accurate. accurate. You buy this RV and then all of a sudden you realize my car can't tow this. Now I got to go buy a different car. So look up the true towing capacity and the abilities of your vehicle and then buy the RV based on that. And the last thing I would say is what if, if you have a budget, get the most amount of RV that you can for that budget. Don't try to cheap out because Rachel said your first RV probably won't be your last one. We bought a pop-up camper and literally a month and a half later got rid of it because we were like, this doesn't work. Had we rented that ahead of time, we probably would have never put the money into the pop-up camper. But what happens is I think a lot of times is people are like, I have $10,000 
I could spend more, but I don't want to. And then they get into that. And then a few months later, they're like, I wish I would have gone bigger. So it's like, to me, like a computer Buy the most that you can with whatever your budget is. I look at our RV. I think the reason that we had such luck with our RV, we bought a 2019 in 2020. I think the old owners probably used it once. It was still literally like fast shipping plastic on places in the RV. Because I have a feeling is that the owners either bought it and either A, decided like, this is not for me, or B, they bought it and they said, I need something else. And they made that mistake instead of really doing their research. Also, don't pack a lot of stuff in your RV. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ask me how I know. You don't. It's amazing how little you actually use when you first start out and you wind up leaving it all. Next time you return home, you just dump off tons of that. Thing. We just emptied out our RV because we're getting ready to upgrade our RV. And I think we pulled out almost 700 pounds of stuff. Wow. And it was like, why do we have nine containers of salt? Why is there enough clothes in here to go for four months, but we only go for four days? I, like, so. I think that can be the danger that's very unique to a weekend warrior because mm -hmm. a weekend warrior is thinking, okay, what do I need for this weekend? I need pajama pants. I need a jar of mustard. I need some shampoo and conditioner. And so what's happening is every time you come back from that vacation, you're not taking things out. You're just going into the next trip with that same thought of, I need pajama pants, mustard, and some shampoo and conditioner. And so now after 10 trips, you've got 10 sets of that <laughs> in the in, inside of your camper. That's a very good, that's a really good advice. Is there a rally associated with the uh, season finale for RV Unplugged this year? Yes, it is. I believe it's the first weekend of August, or it might be the second weekend of August. And it is in Auburndale, Florida it, at Camp Margaritaville. And you get to be plugged in. That's yes. the really cool thing. It actually, yes, it begins on Monday, August 5th, and it runs through Friday, August 9th. And what's really cool is you're going to get to see the actual season finale show along with all of the cast. There'll be games, competitions. You'll be able to compete against each other as well as the cast in some of the different challenges that we had to endure during it. And you also get chances to become contestants on season three of RV Unplugged. And there's lots of things to win. This is going to be a really fun week. And you don't have to have an RV in order to be a part of it. They have cabanas available at in Camp Margaritaville, Auburndale. So whether you have an RV or not, come on out. I think it's going to be a really fun week. And it's in Florida in, in the summertime. It's just perfect. And we're only about 30 minutes away from Disney, SeaWorld, Universal, all of that. So it's really a fun thing for people to come out and take part in. And the best part is they'll be able to hook up with the cast members, but other experienced RVers and newbies themselves. And that you yes. can ask questions about just about anything. And it's not going to be brand specific, which a lot of rallies are. And one of the things that was really nice about RV Unplugged this year is you saw a wide, or you will see, a wide variety of RVs from little tiny things that you would take out into the middle of the woods where you don't have anything other than a little, what is called the little guy, up to half million dollar motorhomes and everything in between. So tow behinds, fifth wheels, it, it's, there were a lot of different types of RVs and it's one of the things that I love about RVing is I think it's the only place where you could literally have a half a million dollar motorhome park in an RV park next to a $15,000 pull behind and everybody gets along. Nobody's snubbing their nose. At, Look what you've got. Not, it's not like what, like in a sticks and bricks type of neighborhood. That's an excellent point. And I would agree with that. Tell people how they can find your YouTube channels and how they can connect with you. You can find us on YouTube at Two Crazy Ketos. So those are two Ks. Two, the number two, crazy with a K, and Ketos with a K. Our camping channel is Two Crazy Campers, still Two KK. And you can find us on, we're on Instagram. We have a Facebook community, and we also have a Mighty Networks community. So lots of places to help facilitate community. And we talk about all the things. We've got lots of RVers within our community. And, and so we just love hanging out with people. And, and that's the great thing about camping, isn't it? That like when you meet somebody new, 
you get to learn about them, learn about their life, what their interests are. And it's just fun around the campfire. I do want to say if, if people are listening and, and they watched season one of RV Unplugged, which if you haven't, go watch it. It was really good. But season one of RV Unplugged was the pilot. Yeah, It was a few guys running around with GoPros and it was an amazing show. If you liked season one, season two is just next level. They wow. had a professional Emmy award winning production company, multiple cameras, microphones, drones. Like it is literally going to be watching The Amazing Race or, or Survivor. Wow. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. But thank you so much for sharing your story today. I really appreciate it. It's packed with good information and I wish you the best of luck in the competition. I know you can't tell us what happened, but. We'll keep our fingers crossed that you had a good outcome. Thank you so much. And thank you for having us today. I can see why Joe and Rachel Stelfer have amassed such a large following on both of their YouTube channels. The couple is enthusiastic in everything they do from losing hundreds of pounds to promoting our being as a healthy and active lifestyle. They started out in a tent, but soon discovered that didn't work well in Florida's rainy seasons. So they acquired a pop-up camper, which they discovered wasn't much better because the canvas never really dried out. Eventually, the couple settled on a 30-foot Grand Design travel trailer, which they nicknamed Eleanor, and described their RV as the ideal camper for a couple. After losing so much weight, Joe and Rachel had much more energy and a stronger desire to embrace life. So they started using their RV three to four days at a time every couple of weeks. They were technically work campers because they continued to produce video content for the YouTube channels and to meet with their followers wherever they traveled. As the couple used their RV more often, they found themselves upgrading the unit to do more boondocking. They added a solar system for less than $6,000 which included 1600 watts of roof mounted solar panels, a 3000 watt inverter, and more than 15,000 watt hours of batteries. That allows them to run their air conditioners for three days without a problem. In fact, they boondocked for five days at the Florida RV Super Show this year, where it rained every day, but the batteries were still at 80% capacity when they returned home. In one of their YouTube videos, Joe demonstrates how easy it is to install the system. Because Joe and Rachel are self-employed, they have flexibility to go camping in the middle of the week when parks and campgrounds are not nearly as busy. They love being able to use their RV for short trips, but are planning to take some much longer trips starting this summer. In August, the couple will be back at Camp Margaritaville in Auburndale, Florida for the RV Unplugged Rally, at which time the final episode will be aired. They encourage other RVers and people interested in exploring the RV lifestyle to take part in the rally to meet up with the contestants, most of whom are very experienced and knowledgeable RVers. To connect with Joe and Rachel, check out their YouTube channels at 2 Crazy Campers and 2 Crazy Ketos, all with K's, or visit 2CrazyKetos.com. Today's episode is sponsored by Work Camper News. With its diamond and platinum membership tools, Work Camper News is much more than just a job listing website. When you put the tools of this professional service into action, you'll find out just how easy it can be to turn your work camping dreams into reality. The one-year memberships open the door to a one-stop shop for all things work camping. Being the original resource for work camping, you'll find the largest number of job listings, be able to connect with the community of work campers, and view resources compiled by experts who've been enjoying the RV lifestyle for many years. If you're serious about leading a successful and enjoyable work camping lifestyle, then a Diamond or Platinum membership is for you. You can even get started with a free 30-day trial by visiting www.workcamper.com forward slash trial. Embark on new adventures today with the support of Work Camper News behind you. That's all I have for this week's show. We have lots of fun interviews coming up, and I'll share one on the next episode of The Work Camper Show. If you like these interviews, please consider leaving a review wherever you download the episodes. Thanks for listening.